This is Plum Ridge Vineyards. I've been buying off this vineyard for about 15 years. It's east of Santa Rosa, up in the mountains, as high as you can go. Recent chemical analysis shows that the uh, soil composition it ranks right at the top of any vineyard in the Napa Sonoma region. All of our unfiltered red wines pretty much are sourced from these amazing vineyards. Here I am on my way up the mountain to drop off my harvest bins. They pick the grapes at three o'clock in the morning, so I have to get there early. The berries need to be cold to protect their delicate flavors and acidity. So here I am on my way back down the mountain after dropping off the harvest bins, uh, where you see the sunset is pretty much where the city of Santa Rosa lies. This is my Cabernet Sauvignon block. Uh, you can see a cool fog floating over the hills. This is paradise. My grape harvest crew has been working all night long and I'm waiting for them to come down the mountain right now with my delicate Petite Syrah grapes. Plum Ridge Vineyard, 6.30 in the morning. I like to help out the harvest crew as much as I can. Uh, here I'm picking my Petite Syrah grapes uh, just because we wanted to top up our harvest bins with a couple more hundred pounds to get all the grapes I can. I'm not the fastest at picking the grapes, so I decided to leave it up to the pros as they can pick a thousand pounds in three hours. That's a good one. <laughs> this is Daniel, the vineyard manager. He offered to help me pick my Petite Syrah grapes. Uh, he's been managing this vineyard for about 25 years. Can't wait to go home and uh, crush these grapes. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> this is the loading of the first bin into my budget rent van. Uh, the vans are 10 feet long and the harvest bins are four foot by four foot. So I can actually get just over 2,000 pounds in each load. After Daniel loaded up my second harvest bin, I ended up with just over 2,200 pounds of my Petite Syrah, which is just over a ton. Here we are loading up my Beckstoffer Cabernet Sauvignon. I sourced from the Lake County area, which actually borders Napa County. And now I'm prepared for the long journey back to Laguna Beach in my budget rent-a-van. I blast ACDC all the way there and all the way back, and that's how I get through it. While on my way to the weigh scale to get my grapes weighed, an unexpected delay occurs. My Instagram got 200 likes. Finally back in Laguna Beach, I have my premium grapes on site. The first step is to crush. My assistant winemaker John and my enologist Heather will be crushing first thing in the morning. Now that I have my grapes moved into the back of the winery, I'm heading home to get a good sleep because I got to get up at four o'clock in the morning to head back to Sonoma Valley for the last run. Longtime friend and assistant winemaker John Ryder and his son are now getting ready to crush the grapes. Here we're crushing my Beckstoffer Cabernet Sauvignon I sourced from Lake County in my brand new Crusher Distemmer I imported from Tuscany, Italy. We were able to bring back just over one ton or 2,000 pounds and it took us just over two hours to crush. Slow crushing ensures that we're not going to smash the grapes, but we're going to gently break the skins as we want to be as careful and delicate with them as possible. A closer look at crushing the grapes, I can tell that this is the Syrah grape because it has really thick stems. And if we feed it too fast, it can actually plug up the machine. I finally get to crush the Syrah grapes because I'm done hauling at this point. I moved three varieties in five days, traveling 2,500 miles. Our crusher is also a destemmer, so here you see the stems getting kicked out on one side and we discard them from there. Here John's handpicking more stems because if you have too many stems, it can actually make the wine taste harsh and bitter, so it's a very delicate balance. We like nice, clean fruit before we start the fermentation process. Now that my barrels are full of fresh crushed grapes, we're getting ready to start the fermentation process and move them into the fermentation room. Now that the grapes are fermenting, now called must, the yeast eats the sugar and produces two things, alcohol and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide rises to the top, bringing the skins with it, forming what's known as a cap. We punch the cap down three times a day, every day for 12 days. This extracts color, tannins, flavor compounds, and enzymes from the skins. Our fermentation room holds 16 barrels. Once full, we can crush into the same harvest bins we haul the grapes into and ferment right in our tasting room. Here I'm punching the cap down on my Syrah grapes. It doesn't take that long, typically about 15 minutes for a harvest bin of this size. This is my wine press in action. Gravity will bring the wine through the machine automatically which will have very little tannins. This is known as free run. After free run is done, then we'll add pressure to the bladder inside and it expands and all the wine and the juice and the skins get pressed up against the wall. And then that wine runs through the machine. This is known as the pressed run. We don't want to press with too high of a pressure because it'll extract too many harsh tannins from the skins and the seeds. So we'll now blend the free run with the pressed run. 
So after the pressing process, John and Heather are now discarding all of the pumice. Heather is a new addition to our winemaking team. She has her master's in viticulture and enology from UC Davis, which is the gold standard of winemaking, and we're super happy to have her. Pumice is very thick and cakey and very difficult to remove. Pumice can be distilled into making white lightning or grappa, but also makes great compost for backyards. After barrel aging for two years in brand new French oak, here Nick is bottling our Cabernet Franc, and he can bottle up to a thousand bottles a day. So after years in the making, it's finally time to enjoy our handcrafted boutique award-winning wines. Cheers. Last thing to write, as you already know, no Kenny G here, 80s rock and roll.